What's up, well, that's good, fam. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, I am so excited about this interview. I have a lot of friends and family members who are a little bit jealous that I get to have this incredible woman on the podcast. She has hosted Big Brother for 25 seasons and has a new audiobook out called But First God, which I cannot recommend more. I'm so excited to hear more about her story. We have Julie Chin Moonves on the podcast. Welcome to the show. Sadie, thank you so much. That was a beautiful intro. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Well, you know, I've been so blessed and grateful to do this podcast for over five years now. And it is the greatest gift just to get to meet people like you and hear stories like yours. So I am so pumped that you're on. Wow. Over five years. That's incredible. Yes, it doesn't. You're a pioneer. Well, it doesn't (laughs) hold anything on 25 seasons, but yes, I'm inching my way there, inching my way there. (laughs) Well, um, you know, Julie, we always ask the same question on this podcast to get it started. I always ask, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? So it's not a small one to start with. I'll just throw it out there towards you. Wow. The best piece of advice was something I received in the mail, and that was my first study my first Bible and it was a study Bible Hmm. and I only got that five years ago. I had never owned one. Hmm. And, um, because I mean, that is just a treasure trove. Like that's every piece of advice in that book for anything that you encounter in life, because as you and I both know, many of us out there know there's no new problem for God. Yep. You know, because once, and, and then, and then the biggest lesson from the, from the Bible would be, trust in the Lord, Mm. you know, have faith, Mm -hmm. whatever is um, consuming you and giving you stress or anxiety or keeping up at night, that's showing that you don't have trust in the Lord, that Mm -hmm. he is doing something. He's always Mm -hmm. moving Mm -hmm. in your life and he's doing something good. So hand your burdens and your worries to him and have trust in him. So I think that's the best advice. That's a really good advice. And I love that, you know, you got that Bible five years ago and it's just completely changed your life. And I can't wait to get to that story. Before we get into all of that story, like I mentioned, you've hosted Big Brother for 25 seasons. And I have um, so many of my friends are huge fans of the show, family members that just don't miss it. And so like like I mentioned, they were very excited to hear you on the podcast. Even I told my dad last night, that was interviewing you. And he said, Sadie, that's huge. So you have some big, (laughs) big, big, big fans out there. And I just, I love that so much. What has hosting a show like that for 25 seasons, what has it taught you just about people in general? Oh, it's taught me so much about people. Uh, First and foremost, it has taught me that most of us um, go through life never really having enough self-reflection. I have seen house guests who come in and Playing Big Brother forces you to hold a mirror up to your nose, two inches away, mm. and you might not like what you see, mm. you know, and um, it also gives you plenty of time to do that. So I've learned that um, most of us don't, um, we know what we think of ourselves, but we don't really know how others view us. And um we are some judgy people out there. <laughs> you know, people love to um, just pile on some house guests for, you know, whatever it is they say or do in the house. And we need more forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really like, yes, it's a fun, you know, a reality show, but it really is like a social experiment that shows us um, human nature within yep. ourselves, within others, um, how we deal with conflict, how we deal with our fellow brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the end of the day, the rainbow on it is um, we are a community and and we, we love each other. That is why Mm -hmm. God created us to love one another, Mm -hmm. which is why I sign off the show that way. And no matter what kind of um, conflict existed in the house, house guests, when all is said and done, they come out of the house, they are bonded and they become like best friends for life. <laughs> so so cool. all the silliness that happened in, in the house mm. is, is trivial. 
That's so cool. I, I read somewhere that that show has had more successful marriages than The Bachelor, which is <laughs> kind of cool. Um, actually, um, I love the position that you're in, though, to speak into all of these people's lives. Um, I'm a big Survivor fan, so I love it. And that's definitely a social experience too, experiment, too. You're watching it and you're just kind of seeing the breakdown of what's happening in society right here with these people on an island and you know Jeff has this opportunity at tribal council to kind of speak into their life and to kind of hear what's going on and almost counsel in some ways in some some yeah. episodes um, and you know you are in that position to interview and to talk through um, each person's experience and stuff just from before knowing Christ to knowing Christ now has that changed the way that you even talk to people after the show because I love uh, you had a quote in your book and you said no job is a secular job like any job can be a job that you give glory to God how have you seen that and actually like um, started to apply that into your job right where you're at Oh my gosh. I mean, I talking about people can be judgy. I was one of those people before Mm -hmm. I knew Christ judging these house guests. I, as a journalist, you would never be able to detect that. I don't think you could as I was interviewing people, but I have approached um, that show with a totally different lens since I became a Christian. I put on my Jesus glasses and I view all these house guests with love with my Jesus glasses on. And um, I'm like a a patient parent with them. Um, And I am the first one to now find forgiveness, like, and try and get others to find forgiveness in maybe a, you know, bad thing they did in the house. Um, So I've matured as a human being because I have matured with Christ in my life, Hmm. you know, in Christ. Um, So It's just been, and also like behind the scenes, you know, I used to be such a perfectionist and if things didn't um, go perfectly in a live show, it used to really just like inside my head, I'd get so frustrated. I get so worked up and I don't do that anymore. Hmm. So I kind of approach everything from um, how I question and view and handle the house guests to how I show up in the studio from like a much more calm and and like trusting manner. Yeah. It is what it is. It's so cool. I just love that you actually said this quote in the book, and I thought this was such a good quote. You were like, pre, you know, spiritual Julie to post spiritual Julie is, is the biggest, it was like the biggest weight transformation ever, like weight loss transformation you've ever seen. It was just so different from who you used to be to who you are now, which I think is oh. what it's supposed to be. Like, I think that, you yes. know, when you become a Christian, when you get to know Christ, it's supposed to be like that. Like you're not supposed to look like what you did yesterday. It's supposed to be, um, the old became new, the dead came to life, the blind can now see. It's like, it's a radical transformation. And, you know, I think that there are a lot of Christians walking around who know Christ and claim to be Christian, but you're not seeing fruit from that. Like there's no radical change. You're, you're kind of like, wait, really? Do you know God? Because if you knew God, where's the change where, and, and I don't know why that is for some people and why that's not other than just surrender and truly letting God fully take your life. Maybe it's knowing of him, actually knowing him that really makes the difference of it changing you. Um, but for you, why have you been so vulnerable in sharing that change? Cause I think a lot of people too, like pride keeps them from, um, you know, people seeing who they used to be to who they are now, because, you know, you're maybe embarrassed by the way you used to be. What made you go, you know what, I'm going to do an audiobook. I'm going to write this whole story out because I want people to know I'm not who I used to be. Well, I think a big reason is because um, learning about how, you know, we're not supposed to be a Lone Ranger Christian. You know, we and especially God has blessed me with so many different jobs and so many different, um, you know, this career and so many different platforms to speak publicly that if I don't use the gifts and blessings he gave me to publicly now speak to, you know, the whole community who I am, then I'm not doing my part. You know, I need to tell the world because I do have you know, a platform to let the world know who I am. I, you know, do have a certain amount of influence in the world that could bring 
a positive change and create more disciples of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there's, um, scripture that says, you know, like if you don't declare, uh, if you don't testify, testify before, you know, the public for me, like, why am I, Jesus going to testify for you before my father? Yeah. So it's like, I would, I would be a hypocrite and I'd be a phony if I didn't, um, use any and every platform to tell the world like, Hey, you know, second Corinthians five seventeen. I am a new creation in Christ. You know, yeah. the old is gone and it's a wonderful thing. And it, it should be that way for everyone else. You know, it is so fun to set new dreams and new goals for your life, especially with the new year around the corner. And when you set out to achieve something new, you'll probably need a little support. And that's where Liberty University can help you. Their mission is training champions for Christ. And that's something that I can totally get behind. Liberty offers over 600 online degrees. So your passion can become a career that you love. Most classes are 100% online with eight week subterms with no set login times, which means that you can complete them at your pace that works for you. Plus all classes are taught from a biblical perspective, which means that you can build your faith and your knowledge, which is pretty cool. And Liberty University's online program's tuition rates are in the top third for affordability against their competitors. They offer lots of scholarships and discounts as well as credit for prior learning. So not only are they helping you achieve your dreams, but they help you stick to your budget goals too, which is amazing. Liberty was ranked in the top five best online colleges in America by niche.com for 2023. So I'm not the only one who thinks Liberty University is awesome. So maybe I'll online learning isn't your style and maybe you're looking for an entirely new experience well Liberty University has a huge campus with state-of-the-art facilities tons of student clubs and sport teams and so much more students at Liberty represent all 50 states and more than 70 different nations and together they volunteer more than 500,000 hours of community service every year that's putting some serious good energy out there into the world I love taking my online classes from Liberty and I know that you will too the schedule was very flexible I have a pretty busy lifestyle and I was actually able to do it for a semester. So when I did my online classes, I did the survey of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it was so cool because I'm learning all this stuff and I literally was starting to preach all this stuff whenever I was going and speaking places. But what I learned in that short time was so useful and beneficial. And so I know no matter what you're going to school for, it's so cool how they're spiritually pouring into you as you're learning uh, and furthering your education. Also, their campus is absolutely stunning. So if you want to go visit, you got to do so. Visit at liberty.edu slash Sadie to get started. And because you're a Whoa, That's Good podcast listener, you'll also get your application fee waived. hey yo It's a friend, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and make this the year that you pursue your dreams. And it's funny because when I, before I started this audio memoir, my idea wasn't necessarily to do an audio memoir. I was doing like, you know, on Instagram, my little God one on one um, you know, show and mm-hmm. things like that, declaring, you know, my love for Jesus. And one of the things I wanted to do as I started my walk with Christ was read the whole Bible. But I found that very daunting and very difficult. And then I thought, okay, I can listen to an audio version. Mm. But I didn't find one that resonated with me. Everything ended up sounding like Shakespeare, whether it was, <laughs> you know, King James Version or not. So I actually called Simon & Schuster because I had written a children's book in 2018 called When I Grow Up. And I emailed them and I said, you know, I would like to volunteer my services for free. And I would like to uh, provide an audio version of the new international version of the Holy Bible. Wow. Um, because then... Then I accomplish my goal, right? I'm reading (laughs) the whole Bible and I'm doing a service, you know, and I'm not charging anybody. Wow. And they weren't interested in that. But in hearing why I wanted to do that, um, the uh, executive I was, you know, Zooming with, he said, why don't you tell your story? Hmm. And I was like, me? Like, really? (laughs) And... um, then it became reality. You know, I didn't think anyone would be interested. And he said, yeah, you know, I think a lot of people would be interested, um, especially since, you know, like I've been known all these years for many different things, but not this. Hmm. So to tell about my transformation and um, how I found God, um, I, I think is something that is worth hearing. I, th- I think it's worth hearing everybody's story. Yep. You know, what, what led them to God? 
you know, and how has, and tell me what he's done for your life. You know, that's the show. I think that's the show that like one day, perhaps in my future, I would, I would love to um, host Hmm. having anyone and everyone, you know, come on the show, whether, whether they're a famous name or not, Yeah, you know, let me hear your miracle story. How has God changed your life? And what made you finally take his call? Hmm. That's great. Gosh, everyone could benefit from hearing those. I mean, when you hear people's testimony, it raises your faith, right? And that's that's why you say, I got to testify. Like there's somebody listening yeah. to this podcast right now hearing your story going, wow, okay, that's testifying to me because I'm in this secular space and I've been thinking I have this secular job and here's my Christian life. But no, these things have to be one and the same. I mean, as you begin to testify, as you begin to say the things God's done in your life, other people see who he can be for them. So I will watch that show. I'm ready for it. And also, (laughs) I want you to do the Bible. That would be amazing. I would listen to that because I am an audio listener. Like, 100%. I love audiobooks. If there's a physical copy and an audio, I'm probably buying both because I'm probably going to listen as I read because I just learn better that way. That's just how my brain works. And so for the Bible, I listen to it as well. And it is hard. There there can be a little disconnect because, you know, thank God for the people that read it. But sometimes, you know, you need a little bit more upbeat as you're hearing uh, them talk. Yes. And so I would absolutely listen to that. And I was actually going to ask you, because one thing that I find super encouraging about your story is... um so here you are. You're, I think you were in your later 40s whenever you became a Christian, right? And yes, 48. Just the past five years. And like, you know so much scripture. And here you are right before we get on this podcast. You're praying over the podcast. You're quoting scripture left and right. And it's so inspiring because I think a lot of people feel like if they become a Christian later in life, they're at such a disadvantage because there's so many people that grew up in the church hearing the Bible stories. And that is true. I mean, it's, it was certainly a blessing to get to grow up in the church and know the stories. But at the same time, I meet people like you who know the Bible more than so many people who did grow up in church reading the stories because maybe they weren't interested in them when they were being taught. So they didn't really apply them to their life. They didn't really sink in. I read somewhere that you currently, you were saying like, I go to five different churches. I I just can't get enough. What does that look like for you? Like in your life, how did you in the past five years obtain so much knowledge of scripture and also just um, become so obsessed with the word? Well, there are wonderful resources that have helped me. And two years into my walk, the pandemic happened. So life as we knew it, you know, God hit the pause button on the world and said, can you hear me now? Hmm. So I had a lot of time on my hands and I was also grieving the unexpected death of my father. So I really was leaning on God um, and his word to make sense of it all. But um, it started with um, a resource called the Bible project.com. Yes. And it's a free I resource. Love I love, I love it. That. Those guys, they managed to uh, break down each book of the Bible um, in these short videos, whether it's with the doodles, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the quick drawings as they're telling, you know, a synopsis of it um, or the more um, like illustrated ones where they, you know, talk about, um, Adam and Eve or like the character of God, whatever it is, mm-hmm. that really helped me in the beginning. That uh, was like a first step. And then um, my aunt, who's my favorite aunt, who helped lead me to Christ, she's a born again Christian. Then she turned me on to these old YouTube videos um, that it's from a British Bible school, a Bible teacher, um, a, a pastor by the name of David Pawson. And he used to do these like 38 minute um, lectures on each book of the Bible. Now, Genesis is like a seven part series, you know, (laughs) some, some Bibles, some, some books in the Bible and there are 66 are, you know, two episodes and he used to record them and send them out on VHS to people who, you know, would subscribe. And now they live on YouTube. And that was, you know, really helped me understand the Bible more. And he does it in a different way than the Bible project does. He doesn't like spoon feed it to you. He expects um, the people he was lecturing in front of to have read that book and then they discuss it. Mm. Um, So they kind of take you inside and behind. It's like from another angle of the view. And then with the pandemic, um, 
Zoom Bible study classes started existing. And my friend of almost 30 years, who was one of my favorite cameramen when I worked in local news in Dayton, Ohio, he um, has become a pastor and he holds weekly Bible study classes wow. on Zoom. And he, even though he's in Boston, <laughs> um, pastoring a church there. So I attend that every week. That's cool. Uh, so yeah, it was like all angles. I couldn't get enough. Yeah. Um, and like, I'll, I'll text him or, or his wife, you know, who was my producer in Dayton, Ohio, and she's a deacon of the church. I'll text them if I have a quick question. But there were so many different resources available. But I th- think you have to, oh, and the gateway for me was Joel Osteen. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Listening to Joel Osteen, my son started listening with me and he made it so easy to digest and understand and remember scripture. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll go to a service and then I'm like, what did they preach again? But the way Joel um, uses storytelling and Mm -hmm. experiences from his life or his family's life, um, it really helps those messages stick. Yeah. So, um, it was like anything and everything I can get my hands on. That's awesome. I love that so much. See, I think that's the difference. It's like, if you do it because you think you have to do it, if you're like, oh, I'm going to church because I have to, or I'm reading the Bible because I have to, you're not going to get anything out of it, you know? Um, but if you are because I want to know God, because I love God, because we have a relationship, I can't get enough of God. Like, it's not a, yes. a matter of I got to make time. It's like, I, I will find the time. Like, in my car ride, I'm going to be listening or I'm going to be worshiping in my quiet time. In my loud time, it's the 24-7 relationship. It's the constant pursuit yes. of that nearness. And so I, I love that, that you're just getting so filled with who he is and it's just contagious. It just overflows out of you. And I love that, you know, you experience and you went into so many different angles of learning the Bible from Bible Project to lectures to Joel Osteen to, you know, all these different things because you can learn something from everyone. And I think like posturing yourself as a learner and a student is such a good way to live your life because so many people it's like they think oh well I'll learn from this person because this is the way I like to learn or I'll learn no it's like open your ears open your eyes you said that in your prayer earlier like may we always see may we always have the heart to to receive what God has for us in any given moment I mean uh, I preach a lot about, um, I, I'll use analogies from like kids' movies that I'm watching with my daughter. And it's like, if you have eyes to see, you're going to see God everywhere. And it's so, yes. yeah, it's just so fun to live your life like that, you know? Y'all have heard me say it once, you'll hear me say it again. I love a good night's sleep. I appreciate a comfy bed. And that is why I want to talk to y'all about our Miracle Made sheets because they are so, so incredible. They are self-cooling, self-cleaning, soft and comfy and better for your body. What is not to love about that? Miracle Made sheets are made from silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA that are literally made to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. So say goodbye to waking up in sticky, sweaty sheets. These silver infused sheets prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. So they stay fresher and cleaner three times longer than any other sheets. And who wants to sleep on a bed full of bacteria? This is eliminating all that bacteria from your bed. Also means that you're going to have less clogged pores, breakouts, and skin issues. So that is just a game changer. And not only are Miracle Made sheets cleaner, fresher, and cooler, but they're super soft and comfy without the insane price tag of other luxury brands. So you'll feel like you're spending every night in a five-star hotel. So why keep all this goodness to yourself? Miracle Made Sheets are actually the perfect gift for your friends or family. And since they come with three free towels, you actually get two legit gifts for the price of one. So you'll definitely be everyone's favorite gift giver this year. Miracle Made Sheets have been a game changer in our house. Christian and I both love them. They have stayed fresher longer, which is a gift to us because we have two babies and we have a dog in the bed half the time. And so it is great to just be able to kind of, you know, know that there's self-cleaning going on. And also they're so soft and the best quality. Um, anytime we don't have our Miracle Made sheets on, Christian's like, you got to get those things back on because that is the best quality that's out there. So go to trymiracle.com slash woe to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've actually got a special offer for our listeners right now. You can save 40% off and use our promo code 
WHOA at checkout and get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash WHOA and use the code WHOA to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash WHOA to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. Yes, you know, like it's like the old saying, like, stop and smell the roses. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's biblical. Yeah. It's like, stop and open your eyes yeah. and see all of God's creation, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, every grain of sand being, you know, unique and yeah. its own thing, like snowflakes or, you know, every blade of grass or every sunrise and sunset, every flower. It's, you know, and appreciating his his creations. You know, I used to be terrified of like creepy crawly things. <laughs> and since my walk with with God, I'm not. That's you know? awesome. Like I'll see a centipede now. I might be like, oh, oh look <laughs> at that. Like, how did he create that? You know? That's awesome. I love that so much. One one quote you said in the book that I thought this is really cool is you said I didn't even know gossip was a sin until I was 48 years old. Okay, so that was so cool to hear you say because it was like, it wasn't that you were going around thinking you're doing this wrong thing your whole life. It was just, you're just doing what you do. You're just doing, you know, you're living your life, doing your job. And then you're all of a sudden a Christian and a believer reading the word. You're like, wait, like, I can't live like this anymore. What were some of those revelations and how did you confront some of that? Oh, that one was one of the biggest ones because other than, you know, working on a gossip talk show for eight (laughs) years, you know, gossip was part of my life since I was growing up because I have a very big family on both sides and, you know, lots of skeletons in the closet and I got to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So um, learning, I got to stop this because my tongue is the most powerful weapon. Hmm. Now, how do I not only stop using it to, you know, gossip about someone else's life, whether it's true or not, and it's none of my business and I shouldn't be, you know, um, passing on any, any of that information and now using my powerful weapon for something good. How about I use it to spread the gospel? Yeah. Um, that was, that took like, well, like, uh, well over a year, mm-hmm. even probably to this day to like stop, um, mm-hmm. to do an about face. You know, it wasn't just like a faucet. I could turn learn it, it was a sin right. and turn it off, you know. Um, but I have to say, I have made huge strides in that area. You know, I used to waste so much time like reading page six on my phone, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, up until like all hours of the night. I don't even go there anymore. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot more sleep, a lot more rest, <laughs> yeah. um, leading a much more peaceful life and not filling my head with, you know, foolishness or yeah. nonsense. Um, that was, yeah, life changing. See, that's and, so, um, I just, I, 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 sorry to cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I just, I love that because I think that I love that you saw that that was a sin and you go, okay, I got to change this about my life. And then, to admit, you know, it's taken a lot of time. Still to this day, it's something that you struggle with, just like all of us. I mean, there are so many things in my life that are simple things that it's not just like, and go, oh, that's a sin, I'm not gonna do it anymore. No, it's it's yeah. fleshly nature. But part of me that goes, okay, I'm convicted by that. Thank you, God, that you've given me the Holy Spirit to make me go, this is not what's best for my life. You have a path that's good for my life. And thank you that you're actually, you're good. That's why you say not to gossip because it is better for my life to not. It's better for their life, better for, better for my life. I get more sleep. I'm more positive. <laughs> what's coming out of my mouth is actually powerful and changing people's life instead of tearing it down. Like God doesn't just say these things as rules to punish you. He's saying these things to protect you and to love you and to make your life flourish. And I think that a lot of people, when they view Christianity, um, or they start seeing this list of sins. They're like, oh, this is hard to upkeep. But it's not something to like upkeep. It, it's something to make you live the life that you were created to live. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And think about it. Like, you and I don't want people to gossip about us. So who are we to be gossiping about anybody else? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you reap what you sow. Yep. So that's true. And 
And even just like the thing lately I'm um, struggling with is like when I hear someone uh, say something and like, I don't want to like be like, you know, you shouldn't really say that or, you know, and, and, and not laughing and not like, I don't want to shame them, but it's like, how do I let, how do I say in a loving way? Like, you know, you're better than that. Like, yeah. let's not do this. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Cause if, if I don't, then I'm essentially co-signing in that gossip speak. Yeah. You know? That's so hard. That's a good point. I mean, I remember, so my, my husband, his name is Christian and he is very like, um, justice driven, like black or white, right and wrong kind of guy. And he's very much like stand up for the person, you know, stand up for the man. Um, and it's just interesting that you say that because there is one time that, we were in a group of people and they started talking about someone and they were talking about them pretty negatively. It was definitely a gossip moment. And my husband goes, Hey, don't talk about him like that. Like that's rude. And it was so, it was so awkward. Like it was so awkward because it was just like, like the whole room was like, and nobody saw you. It was so awkward. And part of me wanted to go like, Hey, you made that so awkward. But then the other part of me was like, I love you. And I'm so grateful that you were in that moment to just be like, Hey, stop. Like, this is not nice. Like, this is, why are we talking about this person? This is not adding anything to any of our lives by having this conversation. This is just empty space that we're filling with, with nothing that, but, but, um, oh, I love it. Joyce Meyer says empty space is a place. And that's so true. It's like, it's no such thing as just an empty space. You're, you, those things matter. Those words have effect in the room. And, um, uh, yeah, I love that he did that. And I think about yes. him doing that whenever I'm in situations like that. Cause I'm like, this is my, going to be a little bit awkward, but there's this quote, <laughs> My cousin actually said it in a Bible study when I was like in middle school. And I think about it all the time. She said, five seconds of awkward can save you from a lifetime of regret. And I think about that all the time. It's It was so good. It was like, there are going to be moments in your life that are going to require five seconds of awkward, but it's going to save you from a lifetime of regret. And gossip is really one of those things where it really does take a minute to go, you know what, it's about to be awkward, but I'm going to have to stop myself from what I'm saying because this is not right. Or, hey, we're going to have to change the conversation because I can't hear this. I don't, I don't, this is not fruitful, but it saves you from so much regret in the future because of the, you know, the wildfire that spreads from that little one that ignites from uh, the words that you use. So I love that you wrote that's, that in the book. That was just really good. That's just to know. powerful. Isn't that powerful? That's yeah. So, that's powerful what your cousin said. And in middle school. Wow. I know. Good timing to hear that too. Um, so you mentioned being on a talk show for eight years and then you exited the talk show for several reasons. And it was really exiting that show that uh, began to put you in a position where you opened up your life to Christ. But during that time of like, leaving the show and everything crazy that was going on. You talk a lot about how that time you had paparazzi all over y'all and just so many different things and your life was changing your family. Um, I think a lot of people, most people are never going to go through that scenario where they're so publicly seen um, and in such a hard time. But you had to experience one of the hardest times so publicly Um, Mm -hmm. being misunderstood publicly, being hurt by friends publicly, all of that. Um, Just for advice to give to people who are walking through seasons, because even if it's not public, being misunderstood is a hard thing to face. Uh, Having Mm -hmm. a friend backstab you is a really hard thing to go through. What Mm -hmm. have you now coming to Christ or even then, what did you experience then in that moment and some advice you can give to other people who are kind of walking through that, that you've learned now hindsight, looking back at what you were going through? Y'all, I can't even tell you how good it feels to be in our new house. It's just so nice to be home. That first night in our new house was so awesome. And we had our Helix Sleep mattress, which made it just so much better. Uh, The rest of our nights there have been awesome too, because Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that tailors their mattresses to your unique sleep preferences. Helix lineup includes 20 unique models, including kids, big and tall, and the award-winning Luxe Collection and the Helix Elite Collection. With all these options, how do you know 
which one's right for you. Well, all you have to do is take the two minute Helix Sleep quiz and your personalized mattress will ship to your door for free. So we actually got paired with the Helix Midnight mattress after taking our quiz and it is amazing. We absolutely love it. It keeps us cool in the night, which we both like, and it's just absolutely so comfortable. And Helix also knows that there's no better way to try out a mattress than sleeping on it in your own home. So they actually offer a 100 night trial to make sure that you love it as much as I love mine. Christian and I both love our Helix Sleep mattress. Christian was a little bit attached to our mattress before Helix, so he wasn't sure if he would like the change, but I was hyping it up. Well, whenever we changed it, he loves it now, and there is no going back. It is perfect for both of us. It also has um, a cooling element to it that Christian really appreciates because he gets so hot during the night, but he hasn't been getting hot since we switched to Helix, which is awesome. So however you like to sleep, Helix has got you covered. Helix has models with memory foam, uh, models with responsive foam that cradles your body, and models with enhanced cooling features like I just mentioned. And if your spine needs a little extra TLC, then you are covered because every Helix mattress has a hybrid design of wrapped steel coils and foam layers for the ultimate combo of comfort and support. It's the best mattress I've ever slept on and set up was so fast and so easy. Plus, Helix mattresses actually come with a 10 or 15 year warranty depending on the model that you choose. But don't just take my word for it, fam. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by Wired Magazine, and it's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and sleep doctors. Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners in honor of Black Friday. So go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie and use the code helixpartner25. Again, that's helixsleep.com slash Sadie and use the code helixpartner25. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep can start now. You know, you want the truth to reveal itself and that pain, any pain you're going through now, it is a season. I'm glad you refer to it as season and it will pass. Hmm. And sometimes we need to fall down um, and, and have, feel like we have had the rug pulled out from under us for us. We need that shift in our life. Something has to change. I mean, I was not living a godly life. You know, I thought my life was okay. I thought my life was great. And now I look back because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I see it wasn't great at all. It was filled with false idols, no God, busyness, no peace. And mm. to be frank, a few people who weren't real friends that were, you know, in my life, closely in my life. So mm. I needed my life to be turned upside down Wow! for me to find, you know, let things settle and, and, and get rid of the, um, the darkness and the negativity and things that are putting a wedge between me and God, you know, and my job was, was one of them. That was my false idol. Um, that came first in my life instead of God. God wasn't even last in my life. He wasn't in my life. I wasn't inviting him in. Um, so it, I would say, you know, when you're going through a dark time, it's actually during those dark times, it's in the darkness that the light shines the brightest. Hmm. So use it and try and reframe how you think and say things. Instead of calling something a problem, call it an opportunity, an opportunity to change, an opportunity to sit still and listen to what is God trying to say to you. And when, once I did that, God was like, the first line was like, hello, I'm here. Like hmm. I've been waiting at the door for 48 years hmm. and acknowledging him. So it, it's also like, you know, we talked about old sayings, and old adages that you hear in life, like stop and smell the roses or this too shall pass. That that may not be, you know, directly from the Bible, but it's like the seasons that you talk about. And just because I gave my life to Christ and anyone who does, it doesn't mean from that moment forward, everything is going to be, you know, hunky dory and smooth sailing. But it does mean that the next storm that hits, yep, I'm going to get through it because I am not alone. Yep, and He is going to deliver me from that. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a reason why that He allowed it to happen. So you're not going to be in despair because you have your hope and faith and your joy that is a constant hum mm -hmm. inside at my center, that cannot, no one can rob you of that. Yep. 
And that's power. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. That's so good. It makes me think of the verse, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They will comfort me. So it doesn't say you're not going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear evil. I I get to maintain peace. Why? Because you're right there with me. Because you're around your staff. They comfort me. They guide me. Like that. That's the difference of like you're like before Christ and your life after Christ. It's not that you're not so going to walk through valleys. It's not that you're not so going to walk through dark times. But it's that you will have a comforter there with you, and that is power. That changes everything. I mean. When you talk about, I, I was the same way. There was a time in my life where I remember someone asked me if I had peace, and I was like, peace? I was like, what does that feel like? You know, it's just <laughs> been a while since I experienced just feeling peace because I wasn't living a godly life. But now I, I'm so aware of when I don't have peace peace because I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. what's going on here? You know, like, and that, that doesn't mean, um, you know, I'm not saying like whenever things aren't calm, I'm saying like even in the midst of the crazy, if there's not like an internal peace or a, a joy that's a strength or something inside of me that I'm like, okay, God, where are you? You know, I need you in this. I don't want to be left alone in this moment. And I know you'll never leave me or forsake me. So it's so powerful when you get to walk this life with the Lord. And it's so cool. I love that you said you want the truth to reveal itself to you. Um, I think that's such a countercultural thought in our generation, Um, especially uh, my age group of people. They have a hard time receiving truth. Uh, they have a hard mm-hmm. time confronting truth. They don't want, they'd rather just mm-hmm. stay comfortable. That's why I think they mm-hmm. would rather say, well, this is my truth because then no one can right. argue it, you know? And it's right, like, right. well, wait a second, hold on. What is that? And so I love that you said it's, it's actually sometimes a good thing to be confronted by the truth. It's a good thing sometimes to have to fall down because you might need to get back up a different way than you fell down, you know? It's, a, it's actually a good thing sometimes to be shaken so that you can build a soft solid foundation for where you're going. And I think that we're so, we crave comfort so much because we've been so conditioned to comfort where we live, but it's okay to be pushed a little bit. You know, it's okay um, to have to go through some things because it's in those things that you really become who you are. Yeah. You're reminding me of, of how we started this interview about, you know, big brother forcing people who play big brother, it forces you, um, to get uncomfortable, get it uncomfortably close look at who you are. Yeah. You know, um, so, and those who don't play Big Brother, we sometimes go through life and we get an uncomfortable look at, you know, our lives or ourselves and see what needs to change. Um, but you're right, you know, in this society where we're, um, where truth has become a moving target, that's a problem. Um, and it's, you know, it's my truth. And it's like, no, there's only one truth, and that's Jesus. Mm-hmm. So let's start there. <laughs> and he's the only one who can judge, yep. right? Uh, and it's also like these little f- sayings, like, you do you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's like a cute way of saying, like, be selfish. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which is the opposite of what we're supposed to be and what God designed us to be, right. you know, to love him and glorify him and to love and serve one another. Mm-hmm. You know, he who is last shall be first and the whole opposite. Like we have to be, um, be meek. Mm-hmm. And by that's not weak. We need to be humble and be of service. Like Great. everyone else first, you know, show some grace. So that's it's, and, and society is, so not that, whether it's like I drive down Sunset Boulevard and I see the ads or I see shows on TV or, you know, commercials and it's Satan's world. Mm-hmm. It's like it's, we're living in a fallen world where he is the prince of this world. But I also know the power of Christ. I know that Satan is a defeated foe. Mm-hmm. And if you command him to leave, you know, my life um, verse is James 4, 8. Draw close to God and he will draw closer to you. And right behind that is, you know, flee from the devil and he will flee from you. Hmm. So like I am, I will command him to leave, get his hands off of 
you know, my family, my son, the music my son listens to, all of that, you know, my son's, you know, brain, like you're not welcome here. You're defeated foe, defeated by our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, Mm -hmm. like get lost. (laughs) You're in solitary confinement forever. Yes. (laughs) Bye-bye. That's so good. I love that so much. I was reading in this uh, devotional from Jackie Hill Perry, and she said, the godly ask God questions. And she was talking about how sometimes we like fear to ask God questions, but you should ask God questions because she said, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It's just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts for us. And that's one of those verses that's really um, kind of fun to quote. It's like, yeah, your ways are not your ways. But then at the same time, it's like, okay, if your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts, and I need to be asking you some questions. I need to be, um, yes. you know, drawing near to you so that you draw near to me so that I have an understanding. Because when I'm looking out the window and I'm seeing all this going on in the world. Like, God, what do you see? What do you have for me to do? And this is a really cool part of your story. When you started to go into hosting Big Brother, I know that wasn't really your first option. That's not really what you wanted to do. Uh, I I read that you were kind of wanting to do the 60 minute interview thing. You had these grand plans for your life, which many of us do. And especially most people that listen to this podcast are in their twenties and they're just thinking about what they want to do with their life and they're going for it. Um, When you think about God's ways being higher than our ways as thoughts being higher. Um, go back to that time in your life when you were like adamant on what you thought you wanted and where you're at now. What have you learned about God's ways being higher than our own? I have learned that God has a plan for each and every one of us. And trust me, it is so much better than our plans mm-hmm. that we have. So we need to get out of our own way. Because <laughs> yeah. I was in my 20s when I thought, I never want to get married. I never want a family. I want to travel the world and, you know, be a 60 minutes correspondent. And then when I was offered this job to host Big Brother, I was already an employee at CBS. I was working in the news division. So when they approached me with this job, I didn't think it would make sense to host this you know, reality show called Big Brother. And then one day appear on big, on 60 Minutes. I didn't see the two <laughs> kind of meshing together. And the um, head of CBS News, he agreed with me. He's like, you're right. You probably will never be on 60 Minutes <laughs> if you host this show. I'm like, well, then I'm turning down the show. I'm turning down Big Brother. And um, as it turns out, you know, he said, well, if you turn it down, you know, as an employee of this company, it could be seen as insubordination, like not taking orders. Hmm. So then I was like, I mean, I'd love to host Big Brother, <laughs> you know, which way to the studio? So um, that changed. And, you know, so as much as, look, I can stumble through, God's plan is going to win for our lives. I can either fight it and, and make it, you know, um, stumble all the way, or I can just let go and let God, Hmm. you know, that was quickly sorted out for me. But even in the beginning when I was doing it, you know, I didn't do it, um, with joy in my heart or confidence. And, you know, in my step, I just kind of like, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but God is patient and, so was the network <laughs> with me. And I found my way. And now, you know, 25 seasons later, I can't imagine my life without it, you yeah. know. And it it does reach so many people. And it's a way for me to reach people, whether they um, follow me outside of what I do on Big Brother, but maybe just hearing that sign off, love one another. Like I can reach a whole audience with my real agenda, which is God's kingdom agenda. Yeah. You know, and that's powerful. That's a beautiful, wonderful thing. It's great. That's so good. Your story, like I've said several times, has inspired me so much. Just listening and hearing all this, it's amazing. And I'm so grateful that you decided to share it. I'm so grateful that you said, I got to testify. I've been given a platform. I have a story. And I think for those listening, just realizing that whatever you do in your life, like you have a platform, you have influence, whether that's over a large group of people and you're on camera, or that's over the people that you're in your everyday interactions with, your influence 
influencing them. Your testimony mm-hmm. matters. It can change people's yes. life because it's showing people Jesus. And um, Jesus is the hero of every story. And so make sure you tell that. Make sure you tell that part of your story. Julie, it's been an honor to get to talk to you and hear more about your life. Everyone listening, go listen to her audiobook. But first, God, follow along her life. Um, this is just a glimpse of all the goodness that you're going to get. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Sadie, thank you so much. Thank you for your heart and your just kindness and your curiosity, your brain, everything. You are, keep shining your light. Thank you, friend.